and this, this is Good Times Grooming. So today, you guys, I am going to be grooming this baby. She's a standard poodle. As you guys can see, there's two of us standing here. We are both going to be grooming. I've been grooming for 10 years. I've been grooming for about three and a half. And so you'll see us switch off every now and then just to see, you know, two different styles of grooming. So it really relates to, or resonates, oh, resonates. Resonate. Yeah, resonate. <laughs> so it resonates uh, with different with whoever's watching, really. You know, because the groomers who are on different levels or yeah, the we, starter groomers. Yeah, we've got different styles. She's been doing it a lot longer than I have, and so I think it'll be good to see two different uh, kinds of grooms and tips and stuff that we have. So today, Chelsea's grooming. In other videos, you'll see me grooming. For today, she's going to be doing Gwen, and I'll be sitting behind the camera commentating. <laughs> All right, good. Luck. <laughs> okay, so today, y'all, Miss Gwen is going to be getting what's called a modified cut. Some of you call it a lamb cut, depending on you know where you came from. So pretty much, modified cut. The body is going to be shorter than the legs. The legs we're going to leave pretty long. She's going to have kind of a fancy cut going on today. So I'm going to be using a seven seven blade on her body. And I do a lot of these cuts, you guys. I actually like this cut more than a uh, shave band. You know, I like I like to make a fancy dog. Now, I, I can't, for the people who are learning to groom, this probably would not be the video to go by. <laughs> this is just more of in this case, I guess you guys watching me do it. I think this is going to be more of a style kind of thing. For, or a technique. Yeah, for uh, people looking to get better at, you know, modified band poodles. But also, more. And this is a more enjoyable groom for people who aren't groomers. Just to kind of watch and see, like, the transformation. I will still be explaining what I'm doing for the most part. And what I'm doing now is I'm switching out my blade. If your blade is hot, don't keep it on there. You don't need to give back a roasted dog. Ooh. So, pretty much like I said, we're doing a modified cut. So what I do, I'm doing a seven, so when I get to the legs here, I'm gonna blend as I go. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but. So I'm skimming, I'm skimming down, and I'm blending as I go. to blend as I go just because it makes me have to do less work. In this case, we're not doing a lamb. A lamb cut would pretty much, the, or the difference between a lamb and a, a modified is the lamb is more defined. So the legs, they would be cut off like that instead of blended in. But we didn't want to do a lamb today on this baby. I think a modified would look a lot better on her. And is this just you're setting like a rough pattern, sort of? Well, this would be a rough, pretty much. Okay. So I would be going back over all of this. Okay. This is just to get all the hair out of the way from the body. So I need to lift her ear up here and take it down right here. So now on the upper arm. Since we're doing a modified, I usually stop about right here and then stop, start blending. Where is that at from her shoulder? It would be right up, right, right above it, pretty much. Okay. And you always want to leave yourself room, just in case you mess up. So I tend to go a little bit higher, just in case, you know, maybe she moves and I put a hole in it, anything like that. So as you can see, I'm blending it straight down from there. And so here behind her leg, I'm also going to blend this too, and I'm going to take it down at the same time. But you want to keep blending so that it's not such a harsh line. When you go back here behind her arm,
the more you blend, the better it's gonna come out. Because instead of just straight doing the line, you're blending it in at the same time. And it doesn't look as rough. That's always where I have issues. I cannot get that the back of the front leg. Uh -huh. I cannot get it without making it look squared. I mean, oh, I like see what it you're takes saying. me forever because I'm, when I'm going down and shaving, like at the angle, uh -huh. and I'm coming here, I'm chopping it off instead of blending it. Yeah. Then I've got to take it in tighter, and yeah. I can't ever get it to look right. That's why I was doing it initially. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing my boss would get so mad at me. You're not blending. You're not blending enough. I think I take too much. I try to do too much with my clippers, and yeah. it, it turns out whenever I end up scissoring, I end up taking. Like even just looking at it now, what you did with the cover art looks better than <laughs> me when I scissor. <laughs> and this is the plus side, I think, with, with Emily in this because she she's kind of learning along with you guys yeah, too. Yeah, definitely. I've been so we work together, and ever since I think I started working there, we used to work with uh, Nicole. Shout out to Nicole if she's watching this. We used to work with her. And me and her would always be like, God, Chelsea's grooms, like, how does she, you know, we're, we were both like about three years into grooming. So we would watch Chelsea when we had free time and kind of get like tips and tricks from her on things that she does that are different from us because she's been doing it for so much longer. And I always wanted to, I mean, we both talked about, you know, one day just spending the day just watching her grow because we don't have time anymore to... I mean, once once you're learning and you pretty much learn the basics, they pretty much throw you out. And they're like, okay, here you go. And it's up to you to teach yourself or figure out, you know, different techniques from doing research or watching videos or watching other groomers. So we both wanted to, like, take days to just watch Chelsea groom and learn how to do it. So whenever she came to me and was like, hey, let's start a YouTube channel, I was like, yes. Because <laughs> I get to sit here behind the camera and I'm learning right now. I mean, I'm, I'm learning what she does and her techniques and stuff. So... Plus, I think I'll have some of the questions that you guys would have because I am not on the same level as her. But well, granted, it was a very easy choice to start a YouTube channel with you because regardless of the gap between our work, we have the same drive and we want the same thing. Yeah. So, you know, I couldn't too much see that with yeah. <laughs> any of the other people that we worked with. Yeah. So it was easy to make that decision. but. I always believe, like when you're grooming, that that you never stop learning. Especially me, I, I, yeah. you know, you never stop learning grooming. There's so many, you know, things and people who have come from different backgrounds of grooming, and uh, there's still so much to learn. And I'm just because I've been doing it for ten years, I don't stop. And honestly, I don't think you should, especially if you plan on doing it for a long time. I feel like that's the problem with, you know, these some of these groomers that have 20-something experience. They think there's nothing else out there to learn. It's also kind of the fun in it for me is, like, learning different techniques and mm -hmm. changing it up. Because when you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over again on every single dog, when you're doing 10 dogs a day, same thing, same techniques, it starts to become boring. Yeah. Like, every, you know, every dog is different, but some you get requests. So you're doing the same dog, same haircut, same every, every day. day. So when you get a new dog, or you get, you learn a new technique, or you start teaching yourself, or focusing more on something like, okay, I want to perfect this, let me work on this, it just becomes more satisfying when you start to see yourself getting better. And then the speed on top of that. Yeah. The speed for me is everything, because believe it or not, y'all, just because I'm a groomer don't mean I want to be at work all day. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of these cuts you know, depending on who's doing it, require a lot of time. And I just want to show you guys, this is a little trick that I do. I see a lot of groomers who do this with their shears, but I do not. Right here, I don't use your shears for that, y'all. I take my tin and I simply round it out. Because you risk cutting the dog right there. It's one less thing you have to do with, with shears. And what you guys will notice with me is I don't do a lot of scissoring. I don't, uh, I don't really like to waste my time with a lot of scissoring because a dog like this, depending on who's doing it, could easily take three to four hours, if not more. <laughs> and I could get one of these little suckers out in about an hour and a half. 
because I take down the amount of scissoring that I'm doing. Now on this baby, we're not going to do the sanitaries and all that because I already did all that. Whenever you guys saw her on the table in the beginning, she has already been bathed, she's been blow dried, she's been brushed out, um, had her ears done. You already did her clean feet? Nails, clean feet, yep. yeah. I have so, not done her face because I wanted to show you guys how I do the face. Yeah. So we're going to do other videos, um, you know, showing more in depth for sanitary, pop pads, clean feet, stuff like that. So here with the ears, I do this on every dog. I just shave the hair out from away from the ear. Now on a poodle, you're going to do this anyway because you're going to do a clean face. But I do this on every single dog, no matter what kind of pet it's getting. Just so it's less of a chance of them getting any kind of ear infection. So I'm going to get my seven back. And lift her leg up. Now I'm going to start because we're doing a modified cut on her. The last groomer that did her took off her chest. I normally leave a chest. So I'm about to show you guys that in a minute. But because I'm leaving a chest, I'm going to start from her armpits straight across and take that out. This also gives a more defined look in the haircut. Now the chest, you, that would be grown back out. I'm going to take this off of here so you guys can see her chest. Okay, so as you can see, this is gone. So normally, this would be like that. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it other than that. But so here, you're going to take your blade and go diagonal. Don't ever go straight down because you can risk uh, cutting the dog. So we're going to take it. Okay, so your chest is going to start here, and you're going to blend it down. So you're going to take it, go straight down. So you're starting all the way up. Yes. Pretty much. Like above the rest of Yeah. I like the way it looks a little bit better. So that right there, that would be your chest. So that would, again, that would be grown back out. But I'm going to do something with it a little, in a little bit so you guys can see what I'm referring to. So with the face, you're going to use your tin, your tin blade. And so her parents already did her face for the most part. They do her face at home. Now they did go a little high here. So right in between the eyes, I'm going to take that down, the corner of the eyes, okay. and you lift up the hair by the ears, and then take all of that out. And you're going in reverse? Yes. Okay, so with the lips. The easiest way I found to do it is stretch your mouth out and take that out. Always check your blades if they are hot and not keep using it on the dog. And take that out. I do reverse on the muzzle. When I go to this part, I go with the uh, with the uh, way the hair goes. I got it in the face right here. I'm going to take this with the pin and we're going to blend it into that seven that you did. All right, so that's your 
kasi ko yung tayo. Okay. So as you guys can see, her legs are very long. I do not plan on using any kind of guide blade on her legs whatsoever. We're going to try to keep them the length that they are and clean them up. With my legs, for a dog like this or in any dog that does a modified cut, I do use a seven skip. So with this, you're blending, but you're also taking down the legs too. So with this, you're going to go straight down. Oh, don't move. We don't want to take too much off of her legs. So I'm just skimming and evening at the same time. And if you're a newer groomer, I would not recommend doing this, at least not yet. If you have your own dog, I would practice at home or something. Because if they move, it's over. And if you're not very good at fixing holes, or fixing your mistakes, then I would just wait on that. trying to figure this out so it's a little bit jumpy but I'm trying to move it so that you guys can get a good angle versus staying in one spot because you can't really see what she's doing. Well, we're still new at this. If you guys have any tips or anything about mm -hmm. filming, please let us know. <laughs> <laughs> so you can kind of see it's, it's coming together for the most part. That's before doing any kind of scissoring or anything. This is completely with the seven. Uh, Seven regular, or seven skip, as some people call it. I do take it in more on the inside than I would the outside. So you guys can see that. I take it pretty short on the inside of the way. Look at that shape, y'all. So Ew. you can see the difference. <laughs> This is what happens when you work with your co-worker. Y'all are gonna see us being really silly. But I think everybody takes the whole grooming thing so seriously. It's the thing with people grooming and not wanting to talk. What is that? Well, so I <laughs> had to be put on probation when I first started grooming because Nikita, if you're watching this, <laughs> Nikita's the lady who trained me and I was such good, like me and all the girls in my salon that I started at, at PetSmart, we got along so well, but we would talk a lot. And whenever I first started grooming, Kita had to literally sit by my table and when I would click the clippers off, she would be like, turn your clippers back on. Because I would start talking and I would click them off and just start talking and I'm in my own world. <laughs> and then before I know it, an hour goes by and she's like, why are you not done with your dog? <laughs> so I think that has one thing to do with it. Like I had to teach myself to be able to talk and groom at the same time. Yeah, because I noticed when you're, some people when they're first starting, they're so focused and they're so... Mm -hmm. 
you know, that they don't, they can't speak the silence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you can't, you know, you're focusing so hard. But then I think every groomer ends up forming this uh, blockout complex thing that, you know, you just block out the world. There's yeah. nothing else there. Everything is silent. <laughs> you don't hear the dogs barking in the background. I scare Chelsea all the time because I walk up to her. <laughs> I'm in the middle of the shop, right? And I walk up to her in plain daylight and she's like, oh my God, you scared me. <laughs> and I'm a quiet, I'm a quiet one. I like it quiet. I like yeah. my surroundings as quiet as possible sometimes. At the shop we work at, me and Emily, we put in earplugs because we don't want to hear anybody talk. You can't tell them that's what it's for. It's for the blow dryers. <laughs> no, BB, which is one of our co Hi, BB, which is one of our co-workers, she asked me. She was like, why do you put those things in? She said, are you, you don't want to hear me? I said, no. <laughs> no, especially because I said, like, it's hard for me still kind of to not get distracted and stop grooming because I'm talking. So on days where I know I need to get my shit done and I've got, like, ten dogs or, you know, whatever, but it is hard to stay focused when you hear, you know, when you hear other groomers getting frustrated. I mean, so many things go on in a group shop. Yeah. But when the dogs barking, yeah. dogs screaming, because you know huskies, yeah. they have that scream thing going yeah. on. But when you're in your zone and then you hear stuff in the background that gets you out of that, it's not as peaceful. No. It's nice to just block it all out and just be. It's just you and your dog. You guys, I have a little hump right here. Right in that out. Completely takes a while away. And with the seven, I'm not too concerned about changing it as much because I'm not touching the dog skin. So, of course, with your 30s, when you're uh, using a, what's it called? When you're using a guard comb, you don't have to too much worry about all that. So now I want to show you guys what I'm going to do on this chest. So I'm using an inch here, this on the chest, just to even it back out since they took it down. We differ because I mean everybody teaches and learns a different way but like whenever I was talking to Chelsea about modified I had no idea that any groomers left the chest I've always gone in with if I'm doing a seven I'll go in with the seven in between the legs and carve all of that out mm -hmm. and then make the legs more blended but also my modified was always instead of being here and kind of having that hump my modified was always just blended straight. It wasn't defined at all. So this is a completely different style than what I'm even used to. And then I, you know, I tell them when I, where I learned how to groom, I actually worked there. That lady, she put me through boot camp. Like she put me <laughs> through hell <laughs> to, you know, become pretty much her, you know, because in the place that we were working at, it was mostly her clientele and she wanted somebody who could deliver the same looking grooms as her and she had been grooming for over 20 years so she put so much into me to groom as just as good as her in only a couple years here in between the legs hold your head up i'm taking this out blending that part in gonna hold her ears <laughs> i'm taking this down comes in at. I am all about monks, you guys. This is a 10 inch monk. See, I have two 10 inch. And then I think I only have one that's a, I think it's like an eight inch or something. So right now we're rounding out the bottom of the feet. Don't want to take them in too tight because your legs are not tight. Take it all the way around. At the same time, keep blending. Don't ever stop blending, just keep going. So we did the bottom, so now I can turn her a little bit. Okay. 
So now I'm just going to round this out down here. Shape it up. You're not taking much off. I'm just shaping. So also notice Chelsea only uses curves. Yes. For mostly everything, I think. I do not use streets at all. The same here. All you're doing is defining it. She makes it look so easy, y'all. Do not try this at home. It is not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Especially not with no 10 inch shears. No. See, when I bought my 10 inches, I thought I was ready. I'm like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> I can get 10 inch shears. You know, then I bought them suckers. And I literally, not the dog, I cut myself uh, with the tip of them every single day. And mm -hmm. I would just cuss, <laughs> get so <laughs> upset. And then eventually, <laughs> I got to the point where I wouldn't cut myself anymore. Yeah. But that's the, the rough part about those suckers is that they will give you. Yeah. <laughs> but they take up a lot more space on the dog when you're grooming, which means that you're not doing as much uh, when it comes to scissoring. Mm -hmm. You're able to get more done. Yeah. All right, yeah. So that's what we're looking like on this side. All of this right here, we can go back over with the seven and blend a little bit better. Okay, so for the most part, we've gotten through all the legs. I'm just going to go back over real quick with my seven, just to blend it out just a little bit better. I'm going to have to buy some sevens, y'all. I can't. I can't even watch her do it. It's making me sick. It looks too easy. <laughs> like, but no, okay, so I've tried, right? <laughs> Bibi, you know we've tried. Yeah. We both got seven skips and we tried it and we just couldn't do it. I think because she's comfortable with it, so she's going in. But we were both terrified to take a hole out of the dog, so we didn't. Bibi actually did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she took a whole chunk of that shit. <laughs> short because you want to make sure that the body is proportioned. So what you see me doing now is I'm pulling everything forward, everything back. And so these are monks too you guys. Ten inch curves. So curves. Yeah. And we're going to straight across. But as you can see I have my shears tilted. So it's going in further but it's coming out. My way of so touching on the top. This way. Yes. Yeah. So all that we're taking out. Oh, I can see. So we're taking that all the way across. Okay. So now that we did that. There's different ways to do the head. I've noticed people do it differently. Some people, they go up, comb over, comb over, and then comb back. I go front, side, side, and then back. And this, we're gonna take that out. And here, we're gonna take that out. Y'all, please do not watch this video. I think that you can buy these shears <laughs> and do this at home because I'm telling you, I have been doing this for four years and watching Chelsea work makes me nervous. <laughs> She's good at what she does and she doesn't cut dogs, and it, you know, but this is, this is more experienced stuff that you're watching right here, just so we are all on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> Go home and chop the whole dog's the leg off. Stop. She doesn't want me to finish it. Okay. So same here too. <laughs> I don't blame her. Big ol' shears right in my face. <laughs> okay, so we're taking all of that out. And again, you're coming in smaller and then coming out bigger. So now that we did that, shake. So now that we did that, this is what we have left. So, first the ears, you're gonna define the ears. 
so come that out. So then make sure you fill the ear <laughs> with the bottom of the shear. Find where the ear is before you cut. So I'm right on top of her ear and cut down. Cut down. Take all this out. Also notice that she left this behind. You can see where the dog has been cut here before. Mm -hmm. She left this because whenever you're doing a dog like this, which not a lot of people do, you want to leave extra to blend this. This should be a curve here, not chop <laughs> shape. <laughs> yes. So you can see why she left the, the little extra piece back there. And the owner made it very, very clear that she could not stand the haircut that they did. So I'm doing my year. best to try to fix it. Okay, so we're going to do the same. Oh, she's getting irritated with me now. Because you can see. So we're doing the same with this side, comb it out. Find the ear. And take it out. Okay, so now we have our shape. For the most part, take all. Come here. <laughs> You're gonna take out all the excess here. See right here behind the ear. You take that all out. Okay. So now this is where your combing comes in handy. Oh, nice. Bless you. You're gonna comb, and you are not gonna stop combing. <laughs> that is the, the biggest thing about the head. Is you comb, do not stop combing until you get your shape. So because I said I'm gonna leave it full, I'm really just gonna shape her up the way she is. So you're gonna take away from the eyes a little bit more right here. Okay, so now, what am I? <laughs> I'm gonna go this way. I'm not gonna go back yet. I'm gonna go side to side first. I'm sorry, y'all. She's fighting with me here. Okay. I'm going to go side to side and build my shape. And as you're going, you're tilting more and more to try to get and blend the back of the head. brushed out she was long so Chelsea got to do you know whatever she wanted and mom was okay with us pretty much doing what haircut we wanted so definitely appreciate that and I'm hoping model. you know we'll get more dog some dogs that are a little bit more rare like I do a bed bedding thing excuse me uh at the place that we work at and I'm, uh hopefully we can get more dogs like that so you guys can see the different ranges of uh breeds and also breed cuts. We end stuff like that. I'm just combing the ears out real quick because. Okay, so back to combing. So we got our shape. You guys can see. And so I'm gonna go back over it. Comb it up. So whatever I missed the first time, that's what I'm going back for. So no seven skip on the face? No. Now you'll see some faces that I do. I'll do a seven skip on the face, depending on how uh, chopped up it was the last <laughs> the last room it got. Ah. Can I show your shears? I know those are on Amazon. Oh yes. So these are a little bit more affordable. These were like pet. Lily's pet. Yes, these are Lily's pet. She it was a. Is it Lily's pet or purple dragon? These are purple dragons. No, these are purple Lily's pet. No, those are purple. Oh, they're purple. Those are on Amazon. Oh, okay. Purple so dragon. yeah, it was a four pack. Chunkers, thinning shear, curved, and a straight. And I think it was like, <laughs> what are you doing? I think it was like 40 bucks. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't bad at all. 
because frankly, it's expensive to try to keep up with this kind of um, this, this shop. You know, yeah. these tools are expensive. It's very expensive. Each pair of my monks costs close to two hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm taking my chunkers and I'm going back over and shaping at the same time. So I'm going in the same direction that I did before. I do go back sometimes if it's a smaller dog, but in this case, I still want it to look natural because of the legs. So I'm going in this direction instead. So we're just taking that out to look as natural as possible. Because you didn't take much off the legs. Yeah. And we were kind of explaining to mom, you can already see from what she came in looking like, you see a lot of poodles that the top knot splits and they don't understand why it splits. It's splitting because it's not trimmed short enough. And you see it's still super long, but it's standing up so much better now to where it's not in her face, it's not in her eyes because she trimmed it up. And we will put a before and after up of this baby so you guys can see what she looked like when she came yeah. in. Ooh, you're so pretty. <laughs> you're a pretty baby. As you guys can see, that spot that they had took out is completely gone. Yep. Now it's you gone. can see the curve that yep. we were talking about. That's supposed to be a big dip. So, we got the head done. I don't want to keep doing too much on it. So, even if she shakes, we're still perfect. So now with the ears, we're not going to do much to those either. We're going to comb them out. And for you people that own lovely dogs like this, who don't know how to brush your dog, the worst thing you could do is come in a grooming shop and tell the groomer, knowing that the dog is matted, tell the groomer, you know, I think I want to keep them long. <laughs> no, we're cutting them down. Don't get a dog like this if you do not know how to maintain a dog like this. Because it's a lot of work. It's an everyday thing. So one thing I did notice with people <laughs> and the tails, especially if they're this long, I noticed that they just pull the hair straight down like this, cut the end off, and leave it. You don't do that. <laughs> so after I cut the end off, I hold the tail up. Because you still got all of this you have to clean. Now in this case, her tail is very straight. I can't do much of a circle because her hair is so straight. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to try to clean it up the best I can. So I'm going to take all this off. Go all the way around. What? It's like, get out my butt. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go all the way around. So normally if she had a bushier tail, I do the same thing, but I would round it out up here at the same time. But the whole point is a poodle tail, and if you're covering the poodle tail, then you're not doing it right. <laughs> so I'm taking this off. And once you do that, I'm gonna hold it down. And then I'm gonna shape it up from there. So you guys can see it's short and it's longer here. So I'm gonna round that out. And now you guys can see what we're looking at here. All right. So now I'm gonna go back to her head and use it. Definitely could not have asked for a better model this time. Yeah. Oh. Put your bow in. Beautiful. <laughs> and success. There you go. You guys, this is Miss Jim. Wait. I'm sure, Gwen. Gwen. <laughs> so y'all, this is Gwen. Thank you guys for watching. 
Next time, it's going to be this girl. Yeah, next time I'll probably be growing. Yeah. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Bye, <laughs>